Tonight's informative instalment of Life Support. The only lifestyle show in the know that teaches you things you need to know. Too true. I'm Life Support's DIY handyman and when it comes to do it yourself, that means in the kitchen too. Tonight, Todd's back at the burners, cooking you a tantalising and tasty treat. Oh, Todd, mate, we've all missed your culinary creations. Yeah, we'll miss no more, Missy. I'm Sigourney, and as a modern woman, I feel it's important to make the best of a bad situation. That's why tonight, I'll be showing you how your handiest man around your home could be a stalker. I'm Penny, and right now, that's all you need to know. Tonight, I'm going to show all you babysitters the quickest and easiest way to get those babies to bed. How's it? Dr. Rudy here to better the lives of all you average Australians. And I'll be doing that tonight by showing you one of my favourite ways for civilised and sophisticated men to tap into the secret desires of all modern women. That sounds exciting, doesn't it, girls? Well, with Todd in the kitchen, Penny in childcare, Dr Rudy in the meat market and me in the home, sounds like we've got something for everyone. Well, it sure does. So let's not keep the whole of Australia in agonised anticipation. No, let's put on a show. Oh dear, my stalk has broken in again. I love you, I'd do anything for you. Oh, but I will kill you if you can't be mine. Blah, blah, blah. Bless him, he's got no manners, but at least he's passionate. So if you've got a stalker who keeps breaking into your house, well today, I'm gonna show you how you can put all that misplaced energy to some positive effect. If your stalker says he'll do anything for you, then hold him to it. Before he has a chance to break in again, make sure you leave lots of notes around the house, telling him about all the odd jobs you'd like him to do. And make sure you leave the notes somewhere he's going to find them. For example, here in my shoe collection, I've written a note saying, before you try on all my shoes, could you please mow the lawn? And here in my underwear drawer, my note says, before you rub my underwear all over your body, be a darling and change the light bulb in the laundry. And for the middle of the bed, my note says, before you lie on my bed and masturbate, would you mind getting the leg of lamb out of the fridge and putting it in the oven at 200 degrees, then parboiling a dozen potatoes. Oh, P.S. You have to peel the potatoes first. And that's all there is to it. Sure, he's still going to go through my underwear drawer, stretch all my shoes and stain my sheets, but at least this way, he'll be doing some odd jobs about the place as well. It's almost like being in a normal long-term relationship. Babysitting's the bomb. It's like the ultimate racket. You get paid 10 bucks an hour just to watch TV. That's 10 bucks an hour for something I would have been doing anyway. The only downside is when the little buggers want to stay up and watch the late night scary movie with you. Please, can we watch your movie, please? So tonight, I'm going to show you how to knock this one right on the head. If the kids want to see something scary before they go to bed, then show them something scary. That's all there is to it. They won't want to watch a horror movie now. They're living a horror movie. No worries about them disturbing you in the living room. They'll be too busy barricading themselves in the bedroom. <sighs> it's only six o'clock. Chances are I'll get a tip from the parents for getting them to bed so early. 
So yeah. Yeah, g'day. As you all know, I'm always showing you how to turn the freshest produce into exotic taste sensations that delight the eye and thrill the palate. But I also know that most of you, like me, love the sustaining sugars and full flavoured fat of fast food. So tonight, I'm going to show you how to prepare a complete meal that'll impress even the fussiest fast foodie. Now, so much in food is in the presentation. And for that, you don't have to be the best cook, but you do have to be good at building stuff. And that means using the right tools. Pastry cutters, melon ballers, and even a simple sauce bottle. Now, for the fast food, you want something that's going to be simple to work with, obviously delicious, but more importantly uses a variety of ingredients. And that's why I've chosen this KFC two-piece feed. Chicken, coleslaw, potato, gravy. And if you think that looks tops now, you just wait until we're finished with it. Let's get to it. Now firstly, make sure that your two-piece feed is well rested. Then, pour the gravy from the mashed potato into the sauce bottle and set that aside for later. Next, take the pastry cutter and place it in the centre of the plate. Then, carefully fill that with the mashed potato. Look at that. Perfect. Now, take the chicken and remove the skin, being sure to keep the skin in one piece. Then, simply bone the chicken and arrange it on top of the mash, trying to get as much height into the presentation as possible. Then, using the skin that you've set aside, slice it into attractive shapes. And then. Veil the top of the chicken with the crispy skin. Next, use your melon baller to place three domes of coleslaw around the potato and chicken. Now for the sauce. Take the remaining slaw and place it in the food processor. Just add a splash of water and a pinch of salt and give it a quick whiz. Push that through a sieve and you've got an elegant coleslaw coolie. So, just pour that carefully around the potato and then finish the whole dish with a ribbon of gravy from your sauce bottle. And there you have it. A tower of 11 spiced chicken on a bed of potato puree with a chiffonade of crispy skin and a simple coleslaw coolie. The KFC two-piece feed complete with all the fats and sugars you love but with the presentation your foodie friends prefer. Enjoy. Well, I hope you're all enjoying the show as much as I am. So, what's going on with you and Dr. Rudy? Oh, Penny, this has really come out of the blue. Oh, come on. You can tell me. It'll be our own little girly chat thing, sort of. Oh, well, it's painfully obvious, so you might as well come clean. I can assure you, I don't have anything to come clean about. And besides, I never kiss and tell. Ah, so you and the good doctor have been writing Don't it. go there, girlfriend. I haven't been writing anything. Ah, oh, well, that's a shame. Yes, I'll admit that since his facial renovation, I have become quite attracted to our resident doctor. Oh, well, that doesn't surprise me in the least. Well, I mean, he's really your type, isn't he? Nigh on perfect, I'd venture. Perfect, no. Well, not at the minute with all these mysterious, threatening letters preoccupying his mind. You know he got another one. Shameless hussy. Yeah. And I was starting to think you were the one writing them. Penny, why on earth would I do that? Well, because every time we get a new letter, you get to play the comforting and consoling companion. You get to put your hands all over him. Really? Dude, it's pretty obvious. Well, be that as it may, I can assure you I have had nothing to do with those letters. Well, we're still not closer to uncovering the culprit. But we are closer to the next segment. How's it? Dr. Rudy again. You'd think that with my looks, medical degrees and massive earning power, that women would be falling over themselves to get into my bed. And you'd be right. But as much as women gravitate towards a civilised man with several degrees and a substantial property portfolio, at a deep level, they all have a secret hankering for a bit of rough. Just open any Mills and Boone if you can stomach it, 
all the stories are about lovely girls that engage the Lord's naughty but end up running off with Shane the chauffeur or Jack the jockey. That's why when I take a lady out for an evening, I make sure I sandpaper my hands. A brief rub and my upper middle class lily whites will have a grainy working class sheen to rival any stable boy or grease monkey. Believe me, women can't resist a sophisticated piece of rough. And when you touch the ladies with these blue collar babies, their subconscious goes crazy. So remember your sandpaper and they'll be putty in your rough hands. Bye now. I personally don't know about the whole tradesman thing with girls because I was a tradesman for two years and I never got any. Women are attracted to a man scent. They swear. <laughs> it's the uniform, the body, the coin slot. My ex-girlfriend actually used to like me coming home dirty, you know. There's something about transgressing boundaries of class as well as gender. There's something more taboo about blue collar masculinity. It's less, less constrained or something. I guess a lot of guys are feminine these days. And so when you've got a real masculine sort of guy, it's sort of, it's a nice thing. But I don't know if I would, wa I'd want to fling, but I don't think I'd want a relationship. As a modern woman, I love a bit of rough trade. It's a rough and tradesman-y. The only problem is you can never take them to dinner parties. Because as soon as the conversation moves away from football or sewer management, it becomes painfully obvious that they don't know anything about anything. Now, obviously, I would never force a working man to read books. That would be cruel. But I do know a way you can gently jam a bit of culture into their head without it doing him any harm. If you've ever picked up after a man, you will have noticed that some beer companies print trivia questions inside the twist-off caps. Men love reading simple trivia because knowing all the captains of the Australian cricket team gives them the notion of being clever. But anyway, seeing as this is the one piece of reading that men are guaranteed to absorb, why not print something inside the caps that's genuinely educational? Like a great work of literature. Simply paint the literature carefully inside the cap. Seal the bottle using a home brew capping tool. That's lesson one, ready to go. I'm going to prepare another 23 lessons in the series. Would you like a drink? Oh, cheers, love. It is a truth universally acknowledged that a single man in possession of a good fortune must be want of a wife. However little the feelings or views of such a man may be on his first entering the neighbourhood, this truth is so well fixed in the minds of the surrounding families that he is considered as the rightful property of some one or other of their daughters. My dear Mr Bennett, said his lady to him one day, have you heard that Netherfield Park is let at last? Mr. Bennett replied that he had not. And that's all there is to it. Given that he drinks on average five cases of beer a week, I should get him through the complete works of Jane Austen, William Shakespeare and Charles Dickens by the end of the year. <laughs> <laughs> but I really enjoyed his last book. Oh, yeah. Oh, I just love Jane Austen. Yeah, so do I. It's amazing how her works are a masterpiece of psychoanalytical thinking. Well, considering that they were written a hundred years before psychology was even invented. He makes me so proud. So, if you want to drag your man up by his bootstraps into the world of the written word, then why not do it in simple little lessons he's going to enjoy? That way, the more beer he guzzles, the smarter he'll become. Which means you'll both be happy. Uh, Dr Rudy, are you aware that everyone's been talking about us? Us? Yes. Um, surely you've noticed that our relationship has changed somewhat over the past few weeks. Well, it would be fallacious of me to say I do hadn't felt a change. So, do you want to do anything about it? Do? Well, I really don't know. I guess that's up to you, Sigourney. Up to me? But why? I just feel at the minute I don't want to draw any more attention to myself. After the year of surgery and these continuing threatening letters. Oh no, you received another one. Yes, I'm feeling quite vulnerable at the minute. 
I just want things to settle down and return to the way they used to be. I can understand that, I suppose. Yes, sir. For now, let's turn our attention to the task at hand. Yes, let's do that. You're the doctor, so I guess you know best. Um, let's turn our attention to the task at hand by taking a look at this. Oh, g'day. There's nothing like owning a house on the beach with expansive water views. But with property prices skyrocketing, most Australians can only dream. On the other hand, this house is only three streets back from the beach, so it's worth less than a quarter of the price of the other place on the beach with a view. The ocean's there, it's just the view's blocked. Well, luckily, Todd's come up with the perfect solution. This is a periscope. So what we're gonna do is use this technology to give ourselves a view of the ocean from the height of the roof. Have a look at that view. So what we're gonna do is mount a periscope up here that'll reflect this view down to our window. And that's all there is to it. Amazing. That view is absolutely beautiful. So don't give up the dream. If you can't afford a million dollar view, periscope your practically priced property and enjoy the view Todd's way. How's it? Many men suffer from a condition known commonly as fear of PDA, public displays of affection. It is simply a need for personal space in public and is a function of our desire not to look like pansies. Women, however, have an innate need to touch and no matter how much we try and get them to stay away, they still can't help themselves. They just don't get it. Lucky for us men, I've discovered a method of deterrence every woman understands. Ever since they were little girls, shopping with their mothers, women have been trained to respect the check out divider bar. Watch what happens when I violate the protocol. See how the reaction is so ingrained it's automatic. Well men, this learned pattern of behaviour can be used very effectively to deter her from violating your personal space. Watch how I use it. See how it works? Watch how I get even more space. With one of these bars, you too can enjoy a relationship free of the risk of looking like a pansy. Bye now. Cheers. <sighs> Don't you hate it when this happens? Your boyfriend accidentally walks into a door five or six times for the second time this week. And the next thing you know, you've been arrested for domestic violence. You don't have to worry about the cops, though. They'll think it's funny that your boyfriend's such a wuss. What you do have to worry about is the judge. No matter how much you try and explain it, he's never going to understand just how annoying your living can be. So you have to win him over another way. Fortunately, I know a great little trick. Just tell his honour that you're an Indigenous Australian. It doesn't matter if you don't look it. Neither does Jeff Clark, Jason Gillespie or Ray Martin. Then just sit back and let 200 years of collective white guilt eat away at the judge's conscience. The more he stews on it, the more he'll start to think it's his own fault. That you've been so stripped of dignity that the only way you can express yourself is through violence. I bet he's also thinking that if it wasn't for the self-control he learnt in 13 years of private schooling and six years at law school, he'd love to take a swing at his own partner. Once the tears start to well up in the judge's eyes, you know you've got him. Domestic violence is a community problem. It would therefore be better dealt with on a community level. I'm ruling that this case is better handled by tribal justice. And that's all there is to it. Nothing beats tribal justice. A spear in the leg is better than a 12 month stretch any day. It means you don't have to spend time away from the boyfriend. Hey Ezio, you finished cleaning that bathroom yet? See ya. Well, Dodd, 
Judging by the size of the mailbag this week, I'm assuming the problems of average Australians are persisting. Well, they certainly are, Dr. Rudy, but not to worry, because that's why life support's here. That's right. Remember, if you need us to show you exactly how to lead your life, simply drop us a line to life support. SBS Locked Bag 028, Crow's Nest, New South Wales, 1585. Meanwhile, here's Sigourney with some more modern musings, and uh, the little lady's looking tops tonight, Dr. Rudy. Yes, I'm quite aware of that. Thank you, Todd. Yeah, right. Why is it that men have so much trouble packing the dishwasher? They can build spaceships that fly to the moon, design computers with a hundred thousand parts, but the simple packing of the dishwasher throws them into a panic. You can explain it to them all you like, but they still don't get it. <laughs> Luckily, there is something you can do. Today, I'm going to show you a decorating technique that will make packing the dishwasher as easy as watching rugby. It's really very simple. Serving plates and bowls at the back, cutlery and smaller dessert plates in their front and side compartments. But of course, men don't know about plates. So why not use a language he'll understand? That's right, use rugby. This plate goes at the back. What we're going to do then is give it a playing position on the field. It's a fullback. Now, I'm going to paint a jersey on the bottom so that he starts thinking football. Then I'll put numbers on the jersey to indicate its position. Looks colourful, doesn't it? It's on the bottom of the plate, so it won't affect the design. This is an ice cream bowl. On the field, this guy would be a tight head prop. If you have any trouble with which positions go where, get your boyfriend to help. There, all finished. Now, let's test them out. No, darling, look. It's like rugby, darling. Eleven? That's a left winger. <laughs> Two. Hooker. Yes. <laughs> He's got it. Very few men know crockery, but every real man knows rugby. So get your paintbrush out and give your plates field positions. Now you can settle back and barrack for your man while he packs the dishwasher like a professional. Well, I really can't believe it, but here we are at the end of another episode. As good a reason as any to make Todd's tower of 11 spiced chicken on a bed of potato puree with a chiffonade of crispy skin and a simple coleslaw coolie. Well, that's turned out all right, Sigourney. Oh, Todd, mate, I just followed your advice and it really was that easy. Yeah, I've got to admit, that does look the business. Yes, you certainly have gone to a lot of effort, my dear. And I'm sure it tastes as good as it looks. Well, when you cook food with love, it always tastes so much better. Yeah, right. Now make sure you're watching next week for another very special episode of Life Support. That's right, it's Life Support's most popular problem special. Where we'll be showing the sensational solutions you've been searching for. So you know you really shouldn't miss it. And in the meantime, remember, whinging at a dinner party isn't making a difference. And while you're there, you Australians, be good to one another. <laughs> good, good night, night Australia. Australia. So this is just KFC, right? I'm going to go get some cutlery. <laughs>